This video training covers a CompTIA A+, 1.1 objective, given a scenario, install and configure laptop hardware and components. Here are some of the laptop components you will need to be familiar with. You should be able to know the purpose of these components, able to recognize them on a laptop, and able to troubleshoot and configure these components. The keyboard is the main input device on a laptop. It is similar to a desktop keyboard, but are smaller and more compact. Users will occasionally have issues with their keyboards. You should be able to pinpoint and resolve these issues. A common issue you may see is a stuck key. This can be caused by overuse, damage to the keys, food crumbs stuck under the key, or liquid spills that cause the key to be sticky. You should check to see if the key works in the operating system or BIOS, and check for errors in messages. Stuck keys can cause the computer not to boot, and you may hear beeping sounds. In the operating system, certain stuck keys may cause a message to pop up or abnormal behavior. If you're able to locate the stuck key, try cleaning under the key, and if it is damaged, the entire keyboard may need to be replaced. Keyboard connectors can come loose due to constant moving of the laptop. Specific keys or group of keys may not work as they should. For instance, pressing one letter on the keyboard displays another letter, or none of the keys may work. You would need to open the laptop and reseat the ribbon on both ends. Keyboards can also get damaged from objects falling on the keyboard or dropping the laptop. You will notice physical damage to the keyboard. Spills can also cause the keyboard to stop working by shortening the connections. You also look for residue on the keyboard or near the connectors. The keyboard would typically need to be replaced. When replacing the keyboard, you should properly shut down the device, unplug the device from the power source, and disconnect the battery. This prevents the possibility of electric shock and accidental damage to the components. Also make note of any screws, cables, and components that were removed. Taking pictures can help you with this. Use the manufacturer's documentation. This will tell you the proper way and correct order to remove components. When done, test new components. Always, always, always test new components. You do not want a customer to get a device back and it still does not work. This can be frustrating for the end user. The touchpad is the laptop's built-in pointing device. It may or may not include buttons similar to a mouse's left and right click buttons. The user moves their finger or fingers across the touchpad to move the mouse and activate other functions such as scrolling. The user can also tap the touchpad to simulate a mouse's click function. The touchpad is usually connected to the motherboard with ribbons. There may be a ribbon for the touchpad and a separate ribbon for the buttons. Problems you may encounter with the touchpad is erratic mouse movements. This can be caused by a user's hand or clothing rubbing against the touchpad, damage, and again spills. Check for damage to the touchpad or for spills. You can adjust the sensitivity levels in the settings, update the drivers, or replace the touchpad. Another common problem is no movement or functionality at all. This is caused by a disabled or missing driver. Touchpads can also be damaged or disconnected. You'll want to check the driver in the settings. Also check that the touchpad is not disabled. The touchpad can be disabled by pressing a hotkey on the keyboard. Check that the touchpad works in the BIOS and any settings there may be. Lastly, check the physical connections. This is what the touchpad connector looks like. It is a small thin ribbon connecting the touchpad to the motherboard. Laptops use hard drives to store data and applications. The data remains intact even when the device is shut down. Three types of hard drive storage are mechanical hard drives, SSD, and hybrid. Mechanical or magnetic hard drives have disk platters that spin and a mechanical arm that moves across the platters to read and write data. These disks can be 2.5 inches or 1.8 inches and typically have SATA connectors. These mechanical and moving parts can make this type of hard drive more susceptible to failures. These drives typically have the capability for larger storage capacity and lower cost per gigabyte than other drive types. Another type of drive is the SSD or solid state hard drive. There are no moving parts and they use flash memory, which are these chips shown here on this board. They have less of a chance of failure and these hard drives offer faster speeds and are relatively more expensive than magnetic hard drives. 
Hybrid drives are a combination of a mechanical and SSD hard drive. They have a small SSD portion and a large mechanical drive portion. You get the fast speeds of SSD hard drives and the large capacity of mechanical hard drives. These drives are typically lower cost than an SSD drive with the same capacity. Hard drives can come in three form factors, 2.5 inches, which is the most common, also 1.8 inches, and the smaller M.2 form factor shown here. SATA hard drives have a 15 pin power connector and a seven pin data connector. Laptop hard drives can be accessed from the bottom panel underneath the keyboard or a slot on the side of the keyboard. Computers have what is called RAM. It is random access memory and it is a type of temporary memory. It is volatile so once the device is powered off, its contents are cleared. The memory modules for laptops are smaller than desktop memory. They are referred to as SODEMs, small outline dual inline memory modules. Here is a picture of three types of SODEMs, the DDR1, DDR2, and DDR3. You can see there is a space between the pins. This is the key that ensures the correct module is inserted and orientated correctly. On the right, we have a table with the different types of modules, including the DDR4. You'll want to know the pin count for each type of module. These modules also come in various data transfer speeds. Memory modules with faster speeds can allow applications to open faster and have faster response time. When replacing or adding modules, check compatibility with system and existing modules. These modules are delicate and can be easily damaged by static electricity or physically if inserted wrong or forcibly. Here are the steps you should follow when replacing memory modules. First, turn off the laptop. Also use ESD precautions to prevent electrostatic discharge to the components. Locate the memory modules typically under the bottom housing. Remove the memory modules by pressing the side clips out. The modules be, will pop up and be ready to re, be removed. If inserting two memory modules, they should both be identical for best performance, such as the size and speed. Modules should gently slide and lock into place. Test the modules to ensure they are working properly. You can check that they are recognized in the BIOS or in the operating system. Memory modules can become faulty over time. The laptop may not boot or fail the post startup sequence. Multiple memory error messages can also be a sign of faulty memory. You can try cleaning and receding the memory modules or swap the memory modules for known good modules. Also, you can test one module at a time to find a faulty module. Smart card readers are used for authenticating users. It can be used for multi-factor authentication as well. This would be the something you have when it comes to authentication. Passwords are something you know. This increases security. It is used in more secure environments with sensitive data. Some laptops have built-in disk drives for playing DVDs and CDs. They are less common with newer devices and smaller form factor laptops. Since they have moving parts, they are more susceptible to failure. Laptops can have a combination of these four types of networking components. Laptops can connect physically to the network through an RJ45 jack. This connects the laptop to a cable that connects the laptop to the LAN or local area network. Since laptops are mobile, they need to connect to the network without cables. This is called a wireless network or WLAN, which stands for Wireless Local Area Network. These networks are 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. There is a WLAN module inside the laptop with antennas. A Bluetooth module allows laptops to connect directly to other devices over a short distance, such as phones, headphones, and speakers. This is called a PAN or personal area network. Cellular modules offer services similar to cell phones. You can connect to telecommunication towers to transfer data. These can be in many PCIe or M.2 modules. You can also add a USB device to add functionality and some laptops have built-in express card slots. The video display on a laptop includes the graphics processing unit and some type of screen such as the LCD, LED, or OLED. The GPU processes the display information and sends it to the screen. Most laptops have this component integrated into the motherboard. However, higher-end laptops may have a separate GPU. 
Some display issues you may come across are dark areas and irregular lines. This may be caused by a crack or damaged screen. The screen is a very fragile component. Sometimes a user can grab the device by the screen and it will crack. Also dropping the laptop or closing the lid forcefully can damage the screen. You can check the display and diagnostics mode. If it is still not displaying correctly, it will need to be replaced. Another issue is no video showing on the screen at all. You can test this with an external monitor. Most laptops will have an external video output such as HDMI, VGA, or a display port for connecting a monitor. If you get video, you can check if the settings such as the resolution is correct and the driver is updated. If still no video, you may need to check the laptop's lid cutoff switch, which is how the laptop knows the lid is closed and to go to sleep or shut down. If unable to resolve, you may have to replace the GPU or motherboard if the GPU is integrated into the motherboard. Power issues are one of the most common issues. A laptop gets power from two sources, the battery and the power adapter. If the laptop does not power on, first check to see if the AC adapter is plugged in. Some adapters have lights that let you know they are receiving power. Check the laptop for any light indicators that show it is charging. Verify that all cables and connectors are securely connected and are not damaged. Check the DC jack where the AC adapter plugs into the laptop for damage. Constant plugging or unplugging can lead to damage or if a user drops their laptop while charging. Check that the adapter power output matches the laptop's requirements. Too little power can prevent the laptop from charging or powering on, while too much power can over time lead to damage. If the laptop comes on with the adapter but does not hold a charge, it turns off immediately when unplugging pow the power adapter even after hours of charging. Check the battery is securely in place. Try removing and receding the battery. Batteries lose their ability to hold a charge over time and may need to be replaced. The laptop could also be stuck in power saving modes such as sleep or hibernate. You can force the laptop off by holding the power button down for approximately 10 seconds. Then press the power button again to turn on the device. If the laptop is getting power and nothing happens when pressing the power button, then the button itself could be bad. This can be get damaged from constant use or pressing too hard. Also check that no connectors came loose. The button will need to be replaced if damaged. You also can drain the laptop of any power this can actually fix many issues as well. First, you will want to remove the AC power adapter, then remove the battery. Hold down the power button for about 30 seconds. This will release any stored energy in the laptop circuitry. Replace the battery and adapter and try powering on the device. Laptops usually have two speakers to provide stereo sound. It is possible that connectors can come loose the speakers can be damaged by liquid spills or prolonged excessive volume. Speakers may be located in the housing around the keyboard or around the display screen. You will want to check the documentation for location and replacement instructions. The speaker wires will run along the housing of the laptop and connect to the motherboard. The wires are usually held down with tape. The motherboard is the main circuitry of the laptop. All the components previously mentioned connect to the motherboard. If the motherboard fails, you must remove all the components. Be sure to use ESD precautions when working on any internal components. The CPU is the brains of the computer. It processes the data from all components. Age, heat, and power spikes are common reasons for CPU failures. If the CPU needs to be replaced, verify the new CPU is compatible with the motherboard. Memory, hard drives, CPUs, and GPUs can produce a lot of heat in a laptop's very confined space. Fans help keep the components cool by blowing out the hot air. CPUs also have metal heat sinks which draw heat away from the CPU and towards the fan to be blown out of the laptop. Fans are another component with moving parts and therefore is more successful to failure. Fan failure can cause the system to overheat very quickly. You may get an error message when the laptop boots up that says fan failure. You can check that the fan blades are spinning and or if it is making irregular noises. 
something can be stuck in the fan. Use a vacuum to get debris out of the fan from the outside or an air canister to blow out air from the inside. You'll want to go the same direction as the fan's normal airflow. If that doesn't resolve the issue, the fan may need to be replaced. This has been a Quick Bikes education video. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.